Well, uh, I guess we'll get started. Thank you very much. Um, I will turn it over to the treasurer to call the roll. Mr. Peretti. Here. Whoops, hang on a minute, I'm sorry. Okay, Mr. Peretti is here. Ms. Brown? Sure. <laughs> Ms. Rannon? Yes. Ms. Hudson? Absent for now. Uh, Mr. Jordan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Here. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Apologize for starting a little bit later today. Um, I wasn't watching basketball. I promise. <laughs> I was. <Yes. laughs> I'm there are there are a lot of events today, and I yeah. was. Well, that's a different story. Well, um, you know, today's gonna be somewhat brief. Um, you know, we had uh, started a new process, unfortunately. Uh, when the district had gone through some budget reductions uh, into this committee that was a new process uh, going over the personnel items sort of backwards the way that we normally go through it but up against our contractual obligations to our, our labor organizations what we call the two eleven process um, so you know we're, we're we're getting through that process we've already approved those personnel uh, reductions we went over them in this committee we went over more uh, a deeper dive in this committee. Today we're gonna to go over what the result was based on the community conversations and working with our various stakeholders. Uh, so, you know, we'll go through a brief sort of update on that, obviously our minutes, and go through our monthly financials. And then we're gonna kind of look ahead a little bit, see what's going on. Um, and I'll let them do that, but you know, we do have our regular process of the non-personnel budget end. Um, and that's what we'll go through here, um, I would imagine, next month in April. And at the same time, we'll be preparing our five-year forecast. So we'll have two of those conversations at our next finance meeting. The next one could be a little bit bigger, just a little bit longer. Um, we've gotten really good at uh, doing this non-personnel side uh, here, um, and it's going really smooth uh, in getting through those uh, different pieces. You have plenty of experience with it at this point. Um, and that will be happening in April. Uh, and then in May and June, or sort of the last two months before uh, July, and school districts don't exist in July. So, <laughs> so in, in, in May and June, <laughs> sorry about that. May and June will be March. <laughs> well, it's been my experience. Um, <laughs> we'll be going over what we've been talking about the table. Uh, you know, as we know, we have uh, various different uh, budgets here for school districts. You have your non-personnel, you have your personnel, and then the staff have been working really hard uh, on putting together our capital budgets. I know we kind of got a facilities operating sort of look, snapshot what's going on. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is looking at our capital budgets. And what those basically are, are a few different pots of money, uh, they do different things, uh, but looking at what we've done and what we plan on doing in the future when it re regarding our uh, 0.84 mills that we uh, approved in our levy, our permanent improvement, which I get yelled at, but I call it the rainy day fund for capital. It's just the way I remember it. I apologize because <laughs> it's always a rainy day for deferred maintenance. Um, but we have that as well, that half mill. The sale of building is fun, um, and a few other little odds and ends that we'll be diving into in uh, May and June. So that'll be coming up. Next month's meeting will be big, dealing with the personnel budget and the five-year forecast. And with that, uh, Mary Jo, I see how you doing. Hi, thank you. So Sorry, I was Sorry. I just got here too, so no. <laughs> don't feel bad. And uh, we'll get now to the minutes, and everyone has those in their packet. We can look at those briefly, and if I have a motion to approve those minutes. And a second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign for no. All right, those minutes are approved. And we will move right into our monthly financial report, and I will kick it over to Treasurer Bohoric to begin. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is the monthly financial report for February. And I think you'll hear that we have pretty much nothing but favorable news here uh, through this report. As we begin, um, at the aggregate level, um, revenues came in uh, this month such that year-to-date we're actually, for the very first time, under plan. And all of that's driven by real estate tax collection. Mm -hmm. So, But this is the very first month that we've been actually on the year-to-date date under plan. But not to worry, it won't end the year that way. Um, expenditures uh, continue under plan at about almost $16 million under plan. And all of that drives our um, cash revenue, uh, or any cash balances, um, 
up by about 12 million through the month. Um, and that's all, that, that's all good news when our cash balance is climbing. When we look at the uh, revenue line items, the first one is uh, property taxes. February, we continued through the collection, receiving advances. Um, unfortunately for the month, it, uh, it lagged the, the estimate by uh, almost 17 million. And so we went from a favorable 4 million to a 12 million, 12 and a half million unfavorable for the month, or for year to date. However, we already have received collections and those, or I'm sorry, the settlement uh, that will be posted in March. Um, and that will be about 19.4 million um, favorable. Um, actually, 32 million favorable for the month, which will drive a year to date to about 19 favorable. So since there won't be any more property tax activity for the year, I think we'll probably end the year about 20 million to the good on property taxes. If you recall back in September, August, September, when we had that first debt settlement, it was about 12 million to the good. This, this settlement ended up about seven, an additional seven million to the good. Um, what drives that? Um, conservative estimates. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about some, you know, you have to, sometimes there's a change of behavior of tax collections between first half and second half. Mm -hmm. You've got a change in the tax. I, I, I don't know if we can measure this. I can't imagine it being this huge of an issue, but you have um, the change in tax code, which drove a lot of people to pay their full calendar year 18 taxes mm -hmm. in, in December of 17. Mm -hmm. So what you did was you got the normal collection for first half. Of, of the February settlement. Mm -hmm. You got that normal collection, even though it came in in December, you know, we didn't get that till, till January. But you've got that second half that comes forward. It's not 20 million, you know, it's not $7 yeah. million. Dollars, but it, that can influence the behavior and it can throw off the percentage that we do. We forecast or, or project revenue uh, tax collections on a calendar year basis. Then we split it between first half and second half based upon history. And then you take the second half from one year and the first half of the next calendar year, add it together for the fiscal year. So you've got a lot of convoluted factors going on. Um, this, this variance admittedly is a little bit larger than typical. Um, so we'll go back, I'm gonna compare all the settlement periods to what we thought they would be to what they are. Um, generally speaking, unless there's a flaw in our estimates, you know, not, we, can't, we can't control some of the numbers. They, they come in as they are. So uh, Now this, certainly when we do the forecast, you'll see this get factored in mm -hmm. into um, the 18 res, uh, fiscal 18 results. And anything I put in for those settlement periods that drives future settlement periods. So you may see a rise as we did. Um, well, in the previous forecast, you saw a rise in the out year property taxes, all driven because the current year does better than planned. So when you have favorable variances, that will then trickle out through the, through the plan. And I'll talk a little bit more because we have other favorable variances that will um, drive us even further uh, in favor of our cash. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a chance to point back to our budget reduction mm -hmm. and the actual impact on the forecast. So property taxes, like I said, we, we anticipate probably be about 19.4 million favorable for the, for the end of the year. I will tell you this, in the plan, I noted one time that um, we had some projected activity for May. That was an anomaly, um, which was something that went on in fiscal 15. I don't think that's gonna happen. So I took that 9.1 million and moved it back to March. So that the March uh, variances will be more accurate relative to plan, rather than carrying this um, you know, a lower variance and then it works itself out May. That's, I didn't think that made any sense. So I went ahead and modified the plan. The graphs you see for the future of, of uh, property taxes, the balance of property taxes, reflects that movement of uh, estimated money from uh, receipts from May to, to March. On the state aid side, uh, it came in about a, a one and a half million under plan. Uh, that uh, we were favorable uh, the previous uh, month. Uh, but it did drop uh, to about one and a half million over plan or 0.7%. Uh, Just as a kind of a marker, uh, plus or minus 1.6 million on 340 million in state revenue is about a half a percent variance. So um, we think we'll, uh, right now, uh, the state indicates about 30, 339 million, uh, 0.9 million. Uh, we have a 341.5, so we'll be within that. Million six, two million range on, on this as well. Uh, the next couple of categories uh, restricted federal grants, property tax allocation, there's no activity uh, this month. 
Um, of course, both of those are very much on plan. In the uh, all other revenue line, as you look at the monthly graph, you'll see that there was a spike this month. Uh, we got Medicaid reimbursement. We anticipated it for June. We get it in February. Uh, I can't tell you. I, there's no real plan for when it comes in. Sure. So it's a shot in the dark. But in any case, you always we, be happy when Medicaid reimbursements come in. Yeah. Just if they come in. Yes. <laughs> well, and they're delayed by several years. I mean, the calculation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I don't quite understand it. We have a firm that helps do that calculation. But I, I hear them go, well, this is for calendar year 2015. I'll, you know, I'll look at my watch and go, wait a minute. This is really delayed. But we did get it, so that's good. So that'll be a timing deal. Uh, if March, if, if March, April, and May come in pretty much on plan, uh, we should be able to hit the 19 million estimated uh, year to date uh, for this line item. Uh, no other change uh, on, the, on the last line. Um, it's running a little bit above plan, but um, there was no activity to say, to speak of last time. Looking at expenditures, uh, personnel ran about 1.2 million under plan, um, increasing that favorable or that under plan variance uh, to about 7.1 million or 2% under. Um, again, another marker of 2%. Variance at the end of the year would equate to about 11 to 12 million dollars. Um, I'm a little surprised that we're running under plan this much at this point. Um, I mean, it's seven million. If we were four million, I wouldn't be surprised. So, you know, on a relative basis, uh, but again, I'd rather be under than over. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. We do have a three-pay uh, month coming up in June. See how we play out there. Can yes. I ask why, why are you surprised? I just expect to be closer than, than 2%. Um, you know, it may not sound like much 2% to 1%, but, you know, if we were, it's, it's still $3 million. I just think we could be a little bit closer there. And this is, a, this is one of our largest budget lines, so I guess I, I should be okay with a 1% to 2% variance. But because it's such large dollars, I'd like to get as close as I can. It was a little uncertain because of our negotiations this year. Um, what you'll see in the forecast, though, now is we have to take what we think this year ends, will end up, how that line in, ends up, and then factor in our estimates for personnel reductions into next year. So that we don't overestimate the reductions, uh, kind of thing. So, um, but this, this too, you know, if you couple this together with the uh, 19 million in revenue, so we're, we're looking at a, at a 30 million favorable in cash. And I'll reserve my comments about that. Don't get too excited about that yet. I don't so that's excited about anything anymore when it comes to school finance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Purchase services still running under plan. Um, uh, not much change really um, this month. It was only 323 um, over plan this month, so it didn't have much impact on the under plan uh, of variance. Uh, we're still about 6% under on purchase services. Uh, this is the, the same story, same explanation as all, all the previous months. Uh -huh. Charter schools, the adjustments. And that's been, something that we'll be looking to tighten up then you know looking into years ahead I mean it seems like it's always under yeah I think what we're gonna have to talk about is what is the basis for our plan yeah um, heretofore we like to have everything aligned we have um, the five-year forecast then we do our budgeting and we get an appropriation resolution the annual budget and we want to align those numbers yeah precisely but if, if we did our now learn that we have a history of not spending that entire budget, then either we realign the forecast to what we think the expenditures will be, even though you're, you know, you adopt an appropriation for X and the, and the forecast says 0.95 of X, as an example, and then you've got the piece that's the actual plan for a monthly spending. That's a third number. We prefer to have all those three numbers for fiscal year be the same, so I'm not having to explain the differences, but now that we're being a little bit uh, more knowledgeable about how all this works, we may choose to modify the forecast or modify the plan to say, I know we, had, we appropriated this, we have this uh, in the forecast, 
but for our spending plan, we think it's really going to be something less than that, and do it that way. And that that's a, that's these are all estimates, so it's it's simple enough to do that. Does that help? It does. Okay. Um, uh, the charter line, community school uh, STEM scholarship line, uh, ECOT, that annual deduction has dropped uh, 4.7 million to 4.1 million from 8.8 million from the January numbers because they closed in January. Uh, they got reflected. Um, and given that and previous estimates um, from ODE versus what we had budgeted, we've got 191 million budgeted. Um, the, the ODE number never did reach 191 yeah. million for us. Now it's dropped 4.7 million. And we anticipate this could very well end up um, uh, 9 million under plan. We get 191 million in the plan and the last number from ODE is 182 million. Now, so I have my question regarding that, do you think that a beha that behavior will replicate, do you think that hole will be filled by other, I mean, other entities, other <coughs> online entities, are we still tracking what's going on with the group of kids from Columbus City that, that could go to Columbus City Schools? Like, I know we got a few updates to this committee, but you know, what's happened to those kids? Are, the, are their behaviors changing? Are they coming back to Columbus City Schools? Are we gonna see more of that? Or are they going to other charters, doing other online school? Do we have any idea about that? I mean, just to project, I mean, with ECOT gone, you know, what does that look like for the future? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, our initial information suggested that uh, we, we received a few students back, uh, and I, I, we can get the exact numbers for, uh, for you uh, and, and email them out to you, um, but we did not get the, the numbers that we were hoping for. Many of those students are um, uh, enrolled in other community schools. I'm sorry. Online. online community schools yeah. uh, here in you know in the state. Yeah, so, so, but wouldn't the number sort of correct itself then? Is that what we would expect then <clears throat> to, to kind of see next year then kind of return to normal? Well, if they're enrolling yet this year, that number should change as well. It won't go up quite as much yeah. because they've mm -hmm. missed out on something somewhere along the line. Yeah. And, and I saw news of another <coughs> new online school being started. Um, right. That the article made uh, made it appear as though a lot of the ECOT students may go to this new mm -hmm. new school uh, next year. So because of the cap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, th yes, that's exactly what it was. Yes. Because of what now? There's a there's a cap on new vir uh, virtual schools and how many new kids that can enroll in the first year. So mm -hmm. the only way you could do it is to create a new school and allow them to go up to the cap. Yeah. The Ohio something academy mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. was that's exactly what the article said. Yep. It's always an academy. <laughs> it's like an 1,800 kid or something like something that. Something like that. 1,800 students. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see a little bit of a bump. Mm -hmm. Just I for this year. I don't next think, year I it should probably I probably do not believe we'll hit our 191 million planned amount. I don't, I don't think that, that will be, that will continue to, that will be an additional contribution to a favorable uh, change in case balance. Um, supplies and materials. Ran slightly over plan, um, two hundred seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars. Uh, the variance now is about one point eight million under plan. I continue to give you the data on which categories uh, uh, lead theirs. Uh, Gas. Uh, this month's uh, software uh, continues to lead the under plan line items. Operation and maintenance uh, supplies materials was um, still among the top three, but general supplies jumped in there for the first time. And those three categories account for about 80% of the 1.8 million year-to-date variance. This may be a discussion for another time, uh, but you know, as board members, we hear a lot about supplies in the classroom. I know it's a small amount, but I, you, know, you see it a lot, all the time. We always seem to be under plan. I know this, that's a very small part of these various items. Um, but maybe we should take another look at that as a district of what actually is going on with that part of it. Uh, I know, like like you said, a lot of the other drivers are bigger materials, uh, but you know, it's just something that always pops into my mind, and something that I hear a lot in the community. A lot, you should see a lot of <coughs> events and, and different fundraising activities and stuff right. like that. And you know, although I know other things drive this. The regular person that sees this and doesn't pay attention to the subject and know what else is in this line item, they're like, "Oh well, you know, you're under plan, but I can't. I got to go buy markers and 
construction paper for my class. So just a thought, and I know we have a lot of things going on, but at some point I would, I would like to dive into that. And we could drill down to it because when we say general supplies, yeah. some of that is building level, sure. some of that is not. Sure, um, absolutely. And it's still, uh, you know, 73% yeah. expended or encumbered when we're only, we're 67% away through the year. So if you would assume that there's an equal expenditure, which it isn't, it still seems to be well encumbered and spent, yeah. but it is, you know, they still get several, we, school's not out yet. Yeah. Um, there is uh, a tendency, too, to make purchases in the spring and, and do things right as certain closes out, not for this school year, but in anticipation of next year. And then that gets delayed <coughs> later. On. So, but we can, we've got the data to divide, dot, dot further into like. So I have a question, I just I have a question on two items. Sure, one would be on software. That's a pretty big gap. Do we have a big purchase coming in this quarter? Before the end of the quarter? Well, I guess it's two weeks. And, and well, they've got, um, they've got so over 600,000 encumbered waiting to uh, come in to be spent. So is it is it a project that's planned for the summer? I don't. I don't know be that. Bought by, well, that's one question I have. And okay. the second um, would be on the uh, supplemental textbooks um, item. Um, again, that's a, um, and newspaper, I guess, you know, with that and newspapers, periodicals, or um, any of those classroom items, I just, you know, they should be, those should be done by now. They should be done because it's you know it's school will be out soon. So, just in terms of spending, I would I would want to see those at zero at this point or fully spent. Um, okay, I, I I don't know. I've not I don't I've not delved that that far down. But I'll let our uh, executive director of budget know your questions and concerns. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll find out. Uh, again, how much of this is, is uh, di school building level versus uh, more district level uh, budget line items? Um, capital outlay uh, unchanged for the month. Um, this is one line item because of some carryover things from last year that got paid uh, in this year that spiked back in August. Um, will likely end up over plan, but this is a two million line item budget, and so if it comes into three million, it's a million over. It's it's large. It's just it's it just that's it, just what it is. It, it uh, and again was again based on purchases coming forward from uh, last year, but we had pretty sure close to two million more in uh, outstanding purchase orders. So. But that should end the year about the plan. But again, this is the first line I've talked about being the plan for the year. Debt service related uh, items, no activity. Um, the other objects line, uh, the only thing I'll note there, while there was no activity, even though we, uh, had, in, we had like 70,000 in expenses um, uh, against 370 some in the plan, minimal activity there. But the activity next month is due to the March settlement. So we'll be paying auditor treasurer fees, and that'll be that spike there. We'll see how, how close we've estimated it does. Um, other financing uh, uses, uh, this is your uh, transfers and advances out, and that'll, that really, you see how that's going to turn out when you get to May and June. It is running um, uh, about $3 million under plan. So overall, with expenditures um, more than likely to run under plan revenue to be over plan, um, you know, we're looking at uh, potential for a $30 million you know, improvement in cash balance. I just want to make sure that, that uh, everybody remember that during the budget discussion, one of the first things we did was um, reduce that deficit that was projected in the October forecast by $60 million based upon such variances like this over the next four years. So we're well on our way to, I guess, Having that, we took that into account for a reason, yeah, um, and that helped reduce the uh, deficit that we were we were targeting. Um, and uh, I suppose you could look at it another way. When we started our budget reduction, we were originally presenting 21 and a half million. We um, 
you know, reduce that um, down to about 18. So that what's three and a half million over four years is about 14 million that would increase the deficit. If I expect it to be 15 million over, but I'm now 30 million to the good, that 15 tends to offset the reductions. So we're still, you know, trying to do that soft landing and targeting a deficit that's still a deficit. You know, nothing that has happened here takes us out of that that hole, which um, you know was in the range of 90 million after after we added everything, after we had to add everything up, and then given that we should be shooting for 80, you, you're still in that 170 million short this far, you know, this far back. Um, and the only other thing I would say is the favorable variances are always good because as we approach that that 2020 mark um, and have to project out further than that and plan for a levy, um, you know, 30 million helps keep the millage down. That's all I'll say. So that's it for um, February, unless you have any other questions. Uh, as you mentioned, um, now that I'm done with this, we're gonna I'm gonna go in and, and get that uh, you know forecast updated um, in anticipation of our April meeting, um, and we'll, we'll see how that plays out. We'll have to talk about some of the assumptions that we we make there um, in terms of um, you know not only the impact of what's happened this year on the various line items, incorporate the budget reductions, do the estimates for uh, personnel <laughs> reductions. And then have that um, wonderful discussion about what do you want to put in for state revenue? Yeah. And what are, what are we going to assume there? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and the debate begins. Um, so, how that morphs will then give us a whole different picture that might, will, it won't look like October, and it probably won't look like what we were looking at in January, and February when we were doing the budget reductions, because we're probably going to have more more up-to-date information, and we'll likely change some of the assumptions going forward. So that's that's my next step on financial reports. All right. Any other questions at all? So let's go over that recap then, and then hit the budget timelines. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, at the Board of Education's March 6th meeting, uh, board members took the first step to address the out-year deficits in our five-year financial forecast that we've been discussing. Uh, as this group knows, we started this work uh, back in October and November of 2017. Uh, we presented our initial work uh, to the Board of Education at a special meeting on June, January 30th. I keep saying June 30th. I don't know why. Uh, at, at the meeting on January 30th, uh, we started with uh, projections of an $89 million deficit in the fourth year of our forecast, which through the, um, the work that we have done and the um, actions taken by the Board of Education on March the 6th, we have now moved that $89 million deficit to a $39 million in the black uh, for the fourth year of the, of the forecast. And we have nearly cut in half uh, the more than $300 million deficit that we had in year five uh, at the start of this process. Uh, at a special meeting of the board in February, uh, the administration offered a number of changes to the original list that we presented to them on January the 30th. Um, after four community forums and the feedback from the Board of Education on, on uh, January the 30th uh, and numerous comments from the public online and by email, uh, we thoroughly reviewed all of the potential reductions that we presented on January 30th with an intense focus on our personnel decisions because uh, we have a fast, uh, um, we had a fast approaching deadline at the time. Uh, that deadline uh, was March the 5th, which was the start of our teaching and staff allocation process that's required as a part of our contractual obligations uh, with our teaching staff for the next school year. So the following um, is a brief highlight of some of the changes that we made uh, between January 30th and the March 6th board meeting. Uh, we will not realign the Woodcrest Elementary uh, school calendar to a traditional calendar. Uh, we will instead keep them on as a year-round option uh, for them for the 2018-2019 school year. Two. 
we will maintain eight internship coordinators uh, originally marked for reduction, as well as keep uh, eight classroom teachers that were um, identified for elimination at the downtown high school. We will also maintain 15 high school teachers who had been uh, identified for reduction as a part of an idea that we would realign our high school graduation requirements to what the state requirements are. So right now, uh, I believe it's 22 credits uh, to graduate from Columbus City Schools with a high school diploma, and the state requirement is 21 uh, credits, I believe, or 20 credits. And so the idea was that we would roll back our 22 back down to 20, and that would re result in additional uh, staffing reductions as a result of that. But because that's going to take a lot of planning and a lot of discussion, we decided to take that off at this time. Um, we we, we um, also proposed realigning the FTE positions that were funded as a part of the 2016 levy uh, to better match the need and financial resources that we have available. Uh, this would still allow us to keep the pledge of having uh, those positions hired over the five-year promise that was made in 2016. Uh, and we've already uh, hired half of those positions, and so we're just talking about another 50% of the 326 positions, I believe, that were promised uh, as a part of the 2016 uh, levy. Uh, the leadership internship program, well, we had identified that for a reduction as well, and we decided to take that off the list. And so those 16 uh, FTE are not on the list. Uh, we also decided to uh, sustain some of the teachers on special assignment, or we, we like to call them TOSAs. Um, and so the Spruce Run TOSA, uh, and it just so happens I was out there this morning um, uh, touring the grounds, and uh, it's a very special place, uh, and that person does a lot of great work with our students. It's a nature <coughs> research center uh, for our students um, up in the Westerville area. Um, and then we also decided to maintain um, about three other TOSA positions uh, as opposed to reducing uh, all of them. Um, utilizing existing capital funds, and that was a part of the discussion here at this table, um, we were able to identify nearly $800,000 in our general fund that we could shift over to the capital budget. Uh, and so we, we also made that change as a part of the uh, proposal uh, moving forward, and, and some of those items included uh, mobile computers uh, as, as an example. Uh, and then finally, um, we will not reduce the school resource officers that we had identified back in January 30, 30th because of all the things that have been happening over the last two weeks. We just don't feel like that, that's a wise reduction for us to make uh, going into the new school year. and so. Uh, we are not going to uh, make that as a part of our proposal moving forward. So uh, at your place, uh, there is a list of the reductions that were approved by the board on uh, March the 6th. Uh, and as you uh, will see, that it includes 61 FTE, um, 15 uh, classroom uh, teachers from the high school division, and seven classroom teachers from the elementary division. The reason I highlight those is because those reductions are based on our projected enrollments for the fall. And so we go through a process every year of looking at what we think our projected enrollment will be for the fall. And then, you know, if we have to, we roll back our FTE. And if we think the projection goes up, we will add FTE. And so this year, uh, we felt comfortable reducing 22 FTE from our classroom uh, teaching pool as a result of that. Uh, 19 general fund assistants from the high school and middle school. Uh, those general fund assistants um, are, are part-time positions, uh, and so there are 19 full-time FTE, 38 people that we're talking about. Uh, and these are, are folks that help out in the office, but because our middle schools and high schools have a lot of additional support, from uh, classified staff and from administrative staff, we felt that they could uh, take this particular reduction and not, you know, be uh, and not jeopardize their operations by doing that. Um, and I think the the other big item that I, I wanted to to um, 
highlight on the, the list, of course, was the uh, two reading recovery uh, TOSAs uh, that are funded through the uh, Title uh, 2A funds. Even though it's not general fund, we have it listed here to let people know that we're, we're doing that. Uh, and we're just repurposing, you know, those <laughs> dollars uh, that are in the Title II title funds. So, so you have the, the complete list here in front of you. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that were on that list. And so as you, as you, as you can see, um, the board approved on March the 6th 61 FTE reductions. Uh, that is down from 163.5 FTE reductions that we originally proposed on January the 30th. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is a the 61 includes certificated and classified staff members. Um, we also um, went through our administrative staff um, with a sharper pen after the February uh, special board meeting. And just for you know this group's uh, FYI, one of the things that we we did as a part of our process is that we looked at what percentage of our administrative staff. Uh, is of our total um, um, uh, staff uh, across the district, and then what percentage of the personnel budget is our administrative staff when we look at the entire personnel budget. And um, when we did this, we, we, uh, we, we found, or we, we uh, I don't want to say we, we discovered, because I think we pretty much knew that we were a small portion, but anyway, 4% of our total overall workforce is administrative staff. 55% is made up of our teachers. 38% uh, is made up of our classified staff, and those are our bus drivers, our food service workers, our secretaries. Uh, another 3% is made up of uh, our classified supervisors. Um, and so, uh, again, the administrative staff makes up 4% of the workforce. What you should know is that that 4% is uh, a little over 300 uh, administrative staff, but two-thirds of that 300 is made up of school building principals and assistant principals. So when we talk about traditional central office administrators, we're about 104, 105 uh, strong in the district. When we look at the personnel budget, 70% of our personnel budget is from uh, our teaching staff, about 19% is from our classified staff, and then 3% of our personnel budget is made up of our classified supervisors. The administrative staff, again, including our principals and assistant principals in the building, made up 8% of our personnel budget. And so going through our administrative staffing, we have identified an additional uh, $834,433 which is about six FTE uh, that we will propose to the board on March the 20th, this coming Tuesday, for reduction in fiscal year 19. Uh, for fiscal years 20, 21, and 22, we have an additional nine FTE that we will present uh, on Tuesday, which amounts to 1,227,479. And so over the next four-year period, we're looking at a savings of potentially roughly $2 million, a little bit over $2 million from the administrative uh, staff that we currently have uh, in the district. Um, and again, this will be presented to the Board of Education on Tuesday for their review um, and vote on Tuesday. Um, as Mr. Peretti uh, noted, uh, in the coming months, uh, we will have an additional discussion about the non-personnel items. And as Mr. Perret has already said, we kind of did things in reverse this year because of our con contractual obligations to identify staffing reductions before uh, March the, the 5th. And so as a part of our non-personnel um, reductions, um, we will, the, the board will, will meet on uh, February the 4th. And then on uh, February the uh, 12th, uh, we will present to this committee uh, April. our... April? I'm sorry, did I say February? Uh -huh. Thank you. I heard myself <laughs> say it too, right? Uh, on April the 12th, we will present to this committee uh, the non-personnel budget uh, recommendations, um, which I believe amount to another probably $5 million roughly. In, re in reductions? Yeah, in yes. reductions, about another $5 million. 
Uh, at that same meeting, uh, Treasury Bohort will present an updated five-year forecast. Um, at the April 17th board meeting, we will hopefully present to the board the non-personnel budget recommendations that we will share with you all on the 12th. Uh, and the Treasurer has talked about possibly having another FAC meeting uh, the week after, uh, during the week of um, April the uh, 20th, I believe. Yeah, so April right, the 20th. It depends upon how that, you know, that meeting where we were talking about the budget, and <coughs> they will do the budget first, maybe, and then do uh, the forecast discussion. If we just run out of time, we can move it to the last week of the month and still get the review of the forecast done before the board sees it. Um, <coughs> For an official first presentation, that first board board meeting in May. Maybe I mean, if there's nothing too outrageous, and this is just a suggestion, so any comments would be helpful here. If we could just email out the monthly financial forecast, maybe and ask folks if they have any questions or comments. You know, because that meeting so packed, maybe we can have the, for, the the monthly sent to us. Any emails or questions, you know, just send them out. Uh, to us, and then maybe we can dive right in then on that meeting to the budget piece, and write the forecast just for everyone's time. I mean, if that would be okay. What do you think of that? I, I'm not sure what you mean. I'm so we would bypass doing the monthly financial. We'd have it emailed out to us to look at on our next meeting. Yeah, yeah, for the for the April meeting. Okay. And that way we can get right into the budget piece and and five year forecast. If that's okay. Did you see we have a board? The board meeting is the fourth. Not yes, be, because um, we're on spring break and our offices are closed on the 3rd. Um, my understanding is that it's not written in stone yet. Uh, I guess JC is still having conversations with you and your colleagues about it. Not with me. Okay. Yeah, first I've heard <laughs> <of it. laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'll, I'll double back with him then. Yeah, it always is. Yeah. I, mean, I, would, I would object to having the meeting on the 4th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll double back with JC. Uh, you know, the information I had was that uh, he was having conversations with you all about that uh, because the offices are closed on the third um, because of spring break. I would just move it to the tenth. Okay. All right. I'll make a note of that then Thank and share you. it with him. April tenth. Okay. Um, so then in, in, in May, uh, on May the 1st, uh, the Treasurer will present the updated five-year forecast to the Board of Education. Um, on uh, May the 10th, we would come back to this committee with a presentation of the fiscal year 2019 capital budget. And that's been something that the Chairman in this committee has been asking for. And Maurice Oldham, the Treasurer, and our Budget Director, Scott Gooding, have been working uh, very diligently on, on that over the last couple of months. And uh, we, we're, we're pretty confident that we'll be ready for this presentation uh, in May uh, for the committee to review. Uh, then on May the 15th, the Board will have its second uh, meeting uh, in May. And at that meeting, uh, we'll be asking the Board to approve the update, or the Treasurer will be asking, I guess we, we will be asking the board to approve the updated five-year forecast at the May 15th. I said you, and that's that. Well, I guess it is us. We'll be asking uh, for that approval. Uh, and then on June the 5th, we'll have the first board meeting of the board. Uh, on June 14th, at this committee, we will present uh, the uh, fiscal year 2019 annual appropriation documents and information. Uh, which we refer to as the budget, uh, to this committee. And then either on June the 19th or June the 29th, we will be asking the board to approve that fiscal uh, 2019 um, uh, 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 appropriations uh, resolution uh, or the budget. And, um, and that should be a fairly quick process, all the pieces that we've done already. I uh, have been talking with our treasurer and team about possibly getting some personnel budget scaffolding recommendations to this committee in June, and that way we can start to look at, you know, the quirks of a personnel budget, um, you know, what that would look like, what sort of things are difficult about it, what sort of things we, we need to do. Um, but I was, I'd be very happy to see something come to this committee in June uh, of what that may look like uh, for the following year, so that way we will complete all of our budgetary 
sort of uh, processes. Uh, hopefully next year we'll have a personnel budget, a non-personnel budget, and the various capital budgets. So that would really like to see that in June. Yes. You're not going to let me celebrate the fact that we get the capital budget stuff done in May. Give me some time yeah. off before you want another budget. Please. I don't want to hold up the meeting, but if we could have more conversation with you to get sure. clarification on that item and then the other item that you mentioned uh, earlier about the supplies and digging deeper into that. Absolutely. I'd like to have a, a better understanding of exactly what, what you're looking for for both those items. Lots of info. Great. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do we have any questions about any of this that was just from laid out? <laughs> well, that was a very uh, good, tight meeting. I don't see anything else on the agenda for today. Um, and then I, we'll, we will then move ahead then uh, for our next meeting then and mail our e email out then the monthly financial forecast uh, to save time uh, for the next uh, finance meeting. And that way it'll be enable us to dive right into the non-personnel budget and the five people Sound good to everyone? Yeah. All right. With that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same sign for no. All right, we're adjourned. All right.